Welcome to video number seven in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. In this video we'll be creating track routes which are used during manual running of trains and locos. In video number five we drew our first pieces of track shown here and we used iTrain to manually switch each individual turnout to select a different route. Now whilst this works well it's a little tedious to have to click on each individual turnout to get the route we want. It would be a lot quicker and more convenient if we could select a route with just one click of a button and that's what track routes can do for us. Before we get started, let's quickly save this and give it a new file name. So we'll go up to File and Save As, and this time we'll give it the name Tut07 and press OK to save it. One of the features of iTrain is its clean and uncluttered appearance. Objects will reveal their name when you hover above them and then disappear, which is very advantageous on a complex layout where you want to keep things clear and easy to see. For the benefit of these tutorials, however, it would be very helpful to be able to quickly identify the objects as I discuss them. So let's add some of our own text. So we'll go up to the switchboard editor and a change I have already made is to rename the turnouts and I've named them now T1 to T4 instead of S1 to S4 and you can do that very easily by double clicking and then in the name box change the S to a T and click OK. So I'll leave you to do that for the remaining turnouts. To add the text, we can use the text tool, which is up in the toolbar here, or we can use the shortcut, which is Shift E, and that's what we will use here. So I'm clicking on the cell above T1, then I press Shift and E together, and that places the text element. Then we can double click on it and then in the window at the top we just type in T1. We will make it bold and we will give it a colour of deep blue and then click OK. Then we will name one of the sidings here. I'm going to click at the end of this one, press Ctrl E, double click it. This one we will call W for West, make it bold and this time give it a red colour and OK. To speed up the video I will complete the remaining ones and you can then copy them. So that you have this T1 to T4 and then we have siding 1, siding 2, siding 3, siding 4 and then this line over here will eventually form the main line through to the rest of the test track. So we've called it W for West and E for East. And one last change we will make while we are in the switchboard editor is to add a section of track between T1 and T3. So we will click and highlight this area here and then we're going to move the whole of this selection so it is the control and the shift key held down together and then the right arrow to shift it across then we can place our cursor in the middle there and then press the control key to move the focus over to the toolbar on the right here and then use the cursor key to move up until we get to the straight track and then the right cursor to rotate it and spacebar 
to place it on the switchboard. Good, so now let's just press the save button to apply the changes and save it to the layout file. And then we're ready to start entering some track routes. We will start with siding 1, S1. And you can see that there are three possible routes that siding 1 could take. And that is to go to east or to S3 or to S4. And we will need a track route element for each of those routes. So three elements. Now we could place them on the track in S1 just like we saw in earlier videos on the demo layout. But three track route elements on the one track will take up quite a bit of space. So we can actually place them away from the track in their own little square. And that's what we will do. So we will highlight this area here. And then I will press the control key and the right cursor key to spin round the icon in the toolbar and then press the space bar to place all three of them. These will then act like a push button on a mimic panel, for example. To enter the details of the track route, we just select the first one, double click on it, and then that brings up the track route properties. And as usual, we need to give it a name so this first one we will call S1 dash east and we will give it a description of siding one to east. And if we look at the path from S1 through to east we can see that the sequence of turnouts will be T2, then T1, and then T3, which takes us into the east siding. So to enter the first of the turnouts, we press the append button. And in the switch order tab here, you'll see that the type is currently called turnout. If we double click on it, we see a drop down which shows you the other type of objects that can be controlled in a track route. So we have signals, relays and crossings, all of which can be in the list of sequences that you can control in a track route. The relay can be a physical relay or it can be a virtual relay, which is a logical relay that is part of actions. We haven't covered actions yet, so this is just for your general information. For the track routes in this tutorial, we will just be dealing with turnouts. So we will keep it selected on turnout. And then if we double click on the accessory, we see that it lists the turnouts that we've already entered. The first one is T2, so we select that. And then we come across to the state. If we double click, you'll see the two options are straight or branch. And for T2, we need it to be branched, so we select that. The delay we will leave at zero at the moment and I will explain what this column means shortly. So now we can enter the next sequence. So we press the append button again and this time it will be T1 which needs to be branched. So we can double click here, select T1, double click on the state and make it branch, then append for the next sequence, which is T3 straight. So we double click here, T3, and it defaults to straight. 
The last column here is the delay column and that allows you to set an individual delay per accessory and it is the delay that occurs before this accessory is switched. A delay of zero means there is no delay at all and the accessory is immediately switched. You might ask, why do I need a delay? Well, one example is turning a light on and then off after a defined time. So you could add a sequence that controls a relay which turns on a light and then later in your sequence you could then have another sequence for that relay which turns it off after the delay that you require. Another more important reason for having a delay is so that all of your accessories are not turned on at the same time. And that protects the power supply that is powering your accessories from drawing too much current. If we take these three turnouts as an example, although this is a sequence of events starting at the top and working its way down, if there is zero delay between each sequence, iTrain is effectively turning all of them on at the same time and that could draw too much power for the power supply that is powering your accessories. So it is recommended to have a delay so that these cascade down in time. But instead of entering a delay for every accessory here, we can set what is effectively a global delay. If we go to the options tab, you'll see there is a field called rhythm and this sets the time between each of the sequences. The time that you enter here will depend on the type of turnout motors that you have, for example. You may have a solenoid motor or you may have a slow moving tortoise motor. But the recommended figure to put in here initially is one second. That generally gives, for example, a solenoid enough time to power the turnout and discharge the capacitor before the next one needs to be operated. So we will set this to 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. So we can type 1000 and then MS and then click outside. If, if you have set any individual delays in the switch order, the switch order delay will be used for that sequence, that particular sequence, instead of the rhythm value. I'll talk about this automatic control later in the video. The other setting worth ticking is this set always box here. That ensures that all the accessories will be switched by the interface, even if iTrain thinks that the accessory is in the correct state. It costs a little more time in terms of switching time for long lists but it prevents errors by manual changes that may have occurred outside of the program. The reset initial state will reset the accessory back to its initial state after the sequence has finished. I can't think of a reason why that would be useful, so it's not something that I set. Before clicking OK to save this track route, just make sure your rhythm value has been correctly entered here and the decimal points are in the right place. And then that is this track route completed and we'll press OK. 
And now if we look at the track route tab in the browser here, we'll see that the track route has been entered and there's its description. So now we can move quicker with the other two track routes. So we'll double click on the next one. This will be S1 to S3. And we'll give it the description siding 1 to siding 3. We click the append button. We double click on the accessory. We click on T2, which needs to be branched. Then we click append. Then it is T1 branched. T1 branched. Click append. Then T3 branched. T3 branch. Click append. And then T4 we need to have branch. T4, double click, branch. And then in the options tab, we will set the rhythm to a thousand ms for milliseconds. And then we will click on the set always. Just double check that this has been entered correctly. And then we can click OK to save and we see it listed up here. And for the last one, which is S1 to S4, siding 1 to siding 4, click the append, double click, T2, branched, append, T1, branched, append, T3, branched, append, and T4 this time will be straight. And then into the options, 1000 milliseconds, and click on set always. Now you can change this delay if you think you can get away with less time, but uh, start with one second and then work down from there. And then we can click OK and we see that it is entered up here. So let's click the save button to apply the changes to the switchboard and to save it to the file and then we can press the OK button and then we can see whether these actually work. So we'll click on the first one, uh, which was S1 to East. That works fine. We deselect that before we can select the other one. And S1 through to S3, deselect S2, sorry, S1 through to S4 is correct. Now you will notice that when a track route is selected, you see that um, if I zoom in, you'll see that there are these little lock symbols that appear by the turnouts. And that indicates that this turnout has been locked and cannot be used by any other process in iTrain. So this is very important to understand. It means that nothing else can use these turnouts. And therefore you must deselect them when you have finished using this track route so that it frees up these turnouts to be used by any other process in iTrain. Otherwise, you will find that um, another track route or another train route will not operate for some reason. And the reason is that these turnouts are possibly being used by that route 
and eye train is preventing anything from moving because it's not able to use the turnouts. So it would be nice if we could find a way of automatically disconnecting the route after we've finished with it. We can do that. If we go to the edit menu onto the switchboard again and double click in the options tab here you'll see we have this section called automatic control and this allows you to activate a track route based on a feedback sensor being triggered and it also allows you to disconnect a track route when a feedback sensor has been triggered. So for example, let's say that this west siding was actually the main line coming into this section of track. And when the train entered this section of track, we would like iTrain to automatically activate a route which took us onto S4, for example. So we could set a feedback on this section of track here. So when the train arrived, the automatic control would then set this track route active. The train would then follow the path. And then when it entered S4, the feedback in this section would be triggered by setting it here and then that would automatically disconnect that track route for us. But at the moment we have not set up any feedbacks so we can't select them here yet and that's what we will be doing in the next video. And until then your homework if you like will be to set up the track routes from S2 to East and S3 and S4 and track routes from west to east and west to S3 and west to S4 so that you will have something that looks like this. So that you have nine individual track routes and add text to give them more meaning and then up in the browser you should have all of your track groups listed here too. And then press save to apply the changes to the switchboard and to save it to the file. And then click on the switchboard and then you can test each one to make sure that they are working. So have a go at entering the track groups yourself it will be great practice and let me know how you get on in the comments. I will leave a copy of the layout file in the user forum under the frequently asked questions section. So if you get stuck and you need to download this particular layout you can get it from there. If you want to make any changes to your track routes or you need to create some new ones, you can of course go straight to the track route editor and not via the switchboard editor as we have done. When you've finished, the apply button will show up, you'll click on that and then exit the editor and the change will be immediately available on the switchboard. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to help others find the videos. And don't forget to subscribe. That way you will receive a notification when the next video is released. And subscribing is absolutely free. In the next video, we will be creating blocks and taking our first steps towards automation. Hope to see you then.